All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the fourth session of our Python Playground. And today we're going to be doing a little bit more with our uh, tabular data. We're going to go get it from the web and we're going to work on pulling that data down and formatting it and doing some stuff that I think is, uh, hopefully you'll find is pretty neat. So to first, to start off, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've come up with up until now, just as kind of a reminder. We've talked about things called lists. And remember, lists look like, um, well, I'm just going to make a list here. Animals, and I'm just going to make a list. And we, we usually denote lists. You'll probably see these a lot with the square brackets. And then I'm going to make it a list of strings. So we've got, uh, I don't know, alpaca. Um, baboon, um, camel, uh, let's just go ahead and fill this out, uh, deer, I'm going alphabetical here, elephant, um, ferret, I'm just guessing here, um, goose, and hedgehog. All right, so this is a list. We got the square brackets. We've got commas between each of our values in there. And we have, it is a list of strings. You can tell that it is strings because of the single quotes. And so I'm just going to go ahead and assign this to the variable animals by running this cell. All right. So if I look at this cell um, again, and I just bring it back up, animals. It brings this here. We see it's a list because of the brackets. If we ever need to check it to be sure, we can always do type. And it'll tell us it's a list. We can do things with lists. We can go and remember, we can go get specific ones. Remember, it's lists are zero indexed. So the first element in a list is element zero. So if I wanted to get the alpaca, I would say animals zero. I can go back over here and I can change this to number three. Now remember it says three, but it's the fourth element. So that will be deer. We can make lists of numbers. We can do it very quickly using the range function. I think we remember the range function looking like this. So this would be, this would give us the numbers zero through nine if we convert it to a list. And the way that we do that is just list we say we take the range command and we pass it to the list command. So range 10. And so again, we've got a, we've got our square brackets, we've got our commas, we've got everything, we've got our list here. And so what we're going to talk about today is some of the more um, uh, uh, advanced things you can do with lists. And one of the things we're going to do is called slicing. So if you look up here, I went into the animals list and I just grabbed the value that was at position three. You might remember that we did something like this, where we said list range. And if you put two numbers in here, you're setting the beginning point and the end point, but you're stopping just before the end point. So list range three comma 20 gives us the numbers three to 19. And if we put list range, and we put a third number in there, three, 20, and maybe two, what it's going to do is it's gonna get the first one, which is three, go up two, go to five, go up two to seven, so on and so forth, until it stops just before 20. So in this, we have a starting point, an end point, and a step, like we're taking a step of two every single time. Well, what's neat is we can do a very similar thing with lists. Now, remember, we've got our animals list here. And if I say animals zero, that's just alpaca. But if I put a second number in here with a colon, male must be here, the dogs are barking. Um, if I do this, what we've done is we've taken the item in position zero, and we went all the way up to, but stopped just before position five. So we have position zero, position one, two, three, four. And what we've done is we've taken this list and we've sliced it up. And so this slicing mechanism, we're gonna see happen in a lot of different ways later on. 
we don't have to start at zero. We can say animals uh, two colon five, and you'll see that it just, it started at position two, went all the way to five, but stopped just before it. Like the other situation that we had, we can also put a third number in there to indicate a step. So if I said, say, animals one colon, so we've got eight of them total, so say one colon six and colon two, I'm gonna start at position one, go two to position three, go two to position five, and then stop before six. And so that just gets baboon, jump two to deer, jump two to ferret. I don't have to put two here, I could put three, and this one would be baboon, right? Jump two to elephant, or jump three to elephant, and then I would jump three to hedgehog, but since that's after six, it doesn't include it. I can also, if I want to assume that it's the, the default value, I can leave it blank. So in this one, I could say um, animals two colon, skip the middle number by putting a second colon and put three. And this one will start at the second one, camel, go up three to ferret, and it would go up three to a, 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 a third one here. Um, uh, but it, since it would stopped, we, we've run out. I can change this to two. I can change this one to zero. I can remove the zero and add a four. And anytime there's the missing value, it assumes it's the default value. In the first one, that would be the minimum one, position zero. The second space would be the last one. And the third one by default would be one, but we're explicitly saying that this is two. So we can do all sorts of things with these, uh, these lists and such. But what I would like to do is I would like to apply this to our tabular data stuff. And to start, I'd like to take a moment to look at Microsoft Excel. I'm assuming that you've, you've seen Microsoft Excel, you've worked with Microsoft Excel, and you've probably done something like this where you've selected a rectangle of values. And when you select a rectangle of values in Excel, the way that you do it is you, in, you say something like equals B3 colon D9. And what that does is it takes, it creates a rectangle that has an upper corner at B3 and goes all the way down to a lower corner at D9. And you'll see it grabs everything in there, right? It grabs the entire rectangle. And a lot of times that's exactly what you wanna do but sometimes you want to skip values in here. You guys kind of seeing what I'm talking about here when I was talking about steps before? We're gonna do something very similar by pulling data from the web. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna grab our friends, since we're talking about animals, we're gonna grab pandas again. Import pandas as PD. Remember we use the shortcut because we're lazy and we don't want to type six letters, we can type two every single time. So we've imported this. We now have access to the pandas um, module, which gives us some functionality. And remember panda, pandas specifically is intended for like tabular data. So what I'm going to do, I am going to use a new function. Last time we talked about pd.readcsv, which would take a comma separated values file and import it. But today we're gonna do HTML. We're gonna go out to the web, we're gonna get an HTML file, and we're gonna read the content back in. Now, my favorite thing to do with this is one of my favorite shows, and I think it's the favorite of some of the people who are in this group, is to go to um, parks, the Parks and Recreation Wikipedia page. So, we have a page here, this is a Wikipedia page, and you can see that there's some stuff in text boxes and you see this nice table here, this episodes table. And so let's see what happens if we grab, just go grab this URL. I'm gonna copy that URL. And in the read HTML, 
I'm going to put that URL as a string and run it. Let's see what happens. Well, all of a sudden we get a, let's see here, move that out of the way. We get a bunch of text here. Now we're seeing stuff that we see on that page, right? We see Amy Poehler as Leslie Nope, and I think we saw that here, up here towards the top. Do we see that? Not quite yet. Um, we see some information about data and stuff like that. Um, and we're seeing text, like let's see, Ann Perkins, Rashida Jones attends a town me. Uh, we see Ann Perkins, Rashida Jones attend a town me. It ran, ran out there, it just gave us the preview. Um, by default, pandas will assume that you don't need to see everything. You're just gonna see a preview of it. That way it takes up less space on the screen. And so what it did was it found the table on this page. What it's technically doing behind the scenes is it's looking into the HTML and it's looking for anything that is a table. And tables are indicated by the, uh, let's see, table tag. So let's take a look at what we're actually seeing here. We got a bunch of these lines of text and we see Parks and Recreation season one, DVD cover art starring, country of origin, so on and so forth. And that seems to correspond with this data over here. So this information right here is actually a table. But maybe that's not the table we want to get. Maybe we want to get the stuff down here that has some more information. So how do we do that? Well, this should be a clue. We see that square bracket. That means that this is a list. And in fact, if you get the type of it, it is a list. What can we do with lists? We can get items out of certain positions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to assign this to a variable. I don't know, we'll call this say season page, S-E-A-S-O-N page. Again, variable names are meant to be uh, what you need them to be to remind you what they are. You can call them whatever you want. You could call this one, um, I don't know, you could call it one Barry, whatever, whatever makes sense to you. I'm going to call it season page since it is the season one page and I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Since season page is a list, right, I can go get things out of it just like I was doing here. So let's get season page. Remember the first element is at zero. And look, it's already started formatting it into a data frame. Remember data frames from last time. Data frames are just like a, an Excel spreadsheet. We have this data here. Now maybe this is the data you want. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But for what I want to do, I don't necessarily want this table. I want this table here. Ah, beautiful. Awesome. I'm glad you think so, because we're going to do some pretty cool stuff with this. So this, it called the table at position zero. And this is the next one. So that's a table at position one. And this gives us the information from that table. Let's take a look at what we've got. We've got number overall, number in season, title, directed by, written by, original air date, and US viewers millions, and then we have this description in the next row. And that's what we have, number overall in season, title, directed by, written by, original air date, US viewers millions. And then we have this one called unnamed seven. We're gonna explain that in a second. But do you see how we have this description in every single cell in the second row? and every single cell in the fourth row and every single cell in the fifth row and so on and so forth. Because pandas doesn't know what to do. This cell right here, excuse me, this cell right here takes up the entire row. But the row is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells. So rather than treating it as one big cell, it split it up into all those pieces and then put that text in every single one. And so the data is in the even numbered rows and the descriptions are in the odd numbered rows and that pattern persists all the way down. This is one of the things that um, pandas can do very well is we can manipulate the data programmatically 
and rearrange it and do some things that, to my knowledge, are very difficult to do in Excel. So let's take a look at one of the first things that kind of stands out. So if we look at this data row, these things make sense. I mean, number overall, it's the first episode of the first season. We're good. First episode in the season. The title is Pilot, directed by Greg Daniels, written by original air date, U.S. viewers with millions. But then we have this NAN value. NAN in pandas means not a number. And all it means is there's possibly something here. Maybe there's not. I don't know what it is, but it's not a value I can work with. And so I'm just going to put this thing here called not a number. If you're familiar with any database terminology, you're probably familiar with the idea of a null. A null means that the value here is invalid for whatever reason. It can't be trusted. It's not necessarily zero because sometimes zero is a meaningful value and it's not necessarily negative one or whatever. It means that the va uh, data here is unusable. And so Pandas recognizes this and we can do some really interesting things as a result. So we've got season page uh, is our page with the entire data. We want the table at position one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign this to a, uh, another variable. I'm just going to call this one, say, episodes. So we've got episodes equal season page. Let's look at episodes just to be sure. That gives us that same thing we were looking at. And if we say type, it's a data frame, right? We talked about, like I said, we talked about data frames before. So one of the things that we can do with data frames is we can manipulate the data into other cells based upon what's around them. So let's look at this NAN cell we can look at um, putting values into there. And one of the things that we can do is imagine you are keeping track of say temperature, for example, and every single day, three times a day, you measure the temperature. So you measure it when you come in at eight, you measure it at noon and you measure it just before you leave at five. And so you have three times every single day. And so you just have this long, 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 a spreadsheet of date, time, temperature, date, time, temperature, date, time, temperature, date, time, temperature. But one day something happens and you're at a meeting at noon or something like that and you just skip it. And so at that point, at that noon position, you leave it blank. You don't know what the temperature actually was. You don't say it's zero because zero would be really cold. But what you can do is you can say, you know what, I want you to look at the value immediately before or the value immediately after and put that in there for me. Just do me a solid and put the value in there so that way I don't have any of these nulls in it. Pandas will allow you to do the same thing. And so what I'm going to do, there are two functions. There's one called forward fill and there's one called backward fill. Now what's going to happen here is with episodes, I'm going to look over here at this NAN cell. I'm going to look at the next possible value and I'm going to say, I want you to backwards fill that one into here. If I do that and run it, look at what's happened. It has moved this data to here, this data to here, this data to here, and so on and so forth. Do we see how the pattern is established? It's basically saying anywhere you see one of these NANs or nulls, take the value that comes immediately after it and fill it backwards. Why is this helpful? Well, look, we took our descriptions here and we now have a description on the even rows where we didn't have one before. So we've backfilled the episode's data into here. Now, if we go back up and we look at this pattern right here with the animals for two, right? We're jumping over, we're going over two. We're starting at a point, we're going over two. 
we're going over two, we're going over two, we're going over two, and so, so on and so forth. And so we can do that with rows inside of a data frame. So I'm going to say we've got episodes, B fill, and then I'm going to use a, let me back up a little bit. I'm going to use another function called ILOC. And I'm going to put some brackets after it. Now, we've talked about how brackets typically indicate a list. And we've also talked about how brackets in the previous one were how you kind of chop up a data frame. And this is going to be, it's going to be kind of a combination of both. If I say episodes.iloc, what I'm really saying is I'm using a locator, L-O-C, and I'm giving it an integer. And so what I want to do is I want to locate information by an integer. So I'm going to give it two, and let's see what happens. It is this row here. It gives us number overall is two, number in season is two, canvassing, Seth Gordon, Rachel Axler, original air date, so on and so forth, and this NAN thing. When we did the B fill here, we weren't actually overwriting the data. We don't overwrite data until we're absolutely ready and sure because we don't want to make any changes until everything's proper. But what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the second one. If I wanted, excuse me, one in position in row two, if I wanted to look at say row five, that's what row five looks like. And that's about right. It looks like it lines up there. And what we're doing is the first number that we see here, that's going to be the rows. If I wanted to get uh, specific ones, I can do the same things that I did up here with the columns. If I wanted to get the second row up to the fifth row, see it started at two, went to three, went to four, stopped before it went to five. This is just like our um, camel, deer, elephant, right? Camel, deer, elephant. But likewise, I can do the same thing that I did before by jumping over by adding a third number. So I start at zero, jump up two, jump up two, jump up two, jump up two, jump up two. So I'm going to say start at zero, leave this blank since I want to go all the way to the end and go up two. And so now we have just the rows with the data in it, not the descriptions. If I started at one, this would be just the descriptions. I started at one, go up two, go up two, go up two, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine these two so that we get the, get the results of pushing the description into the previous cell and getting every other cell with the data in it. Remember we talked about whenever we see a period, the stuff on the left of the period provides a context to the stuff on the right. So episodes provides the context for B fill and episodes.bfill provides the context for the iloc, the, inter, inter, in the integer locator. If I run these together, then we have a data frame that has the data the way that we want it to be. So in what basically has worked out to be a couple of lines of code, we've gone out, we've pulled the data from this table, and we've formatted it so it makes a little bit more sense. So now to commit this, to make it so that it, it replaces the original data, I'm just going to assign this back to the episodes variable. Dogs need to go outside, so they're coming down the stairs. All right, so we're gonna run this and uh, this now has the values in the 
episodes variable. And we have our data frame pulling the data from that, that web page. There is one thing that I would like to change. It's this unnamed seven thing. Now, changing the values in the column titles, let's look at the values in the column titles. This is an index, it's the columns index, and we have these. It looks like it is some type of list object or array object, and each one of these are strings. Whenever you have something that is strings inside of a pandas object, be it a series or a data frame, we use something called a string accessor. And what this will allow us to do is treat the content as individual strings and then apply operations to them. One of the string op operations you can do, for example, is let's say you have the word banana and you use replace. I'm gonna replace an A with a, I don't know, an R. We can turn banana into burner. And all we're doing is we're saying everything that we see in A over here, we're gonna replace with an R. We can do the same thing with our columns. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say replace unnamed seven, just copy and paste, right? With something that makes more sense, description. And sure enough, that will take our columns that way, rename, renaming unnamed seven to description. I'm gonna then assign this here back to columns, episodes.columns. Let's just go ahead and copy this here. Copy and paste, we're all about being lazy. And there we are, we've changed the column head to description on top of every operation that we've done. So kind of at this point, we're at a, a good kind of recap point because what we're doing is we're going out, we're getting this web page, we're looking through it to find the table that we want, we're assigning that to episodes, we backfill wherever we might want to put, um, replace the NANs with data, and it turns out that it just so happens that this formatting works, so the backfill works. Maybe sometimes you'll see forward fill works. We've got, we're using the backfill with the integer locator and stuff like that. And we end up now with all of this data in a data frame. Just like before, we could save this to a CSV file and all that other good stuff. But to me, what's compelling about this is not so much that we've written all this code, but that this code is reusable. If I go over here and I change this to two, for example, and I run all below, because the tables are formatted the same way, I've now pulled the data from season two by changing a single character. And this is a great thing to do if you ever find yourself in a situation where a web page that you access frequently is in a typically uh, similar format and you can write this script to dump these things out and get them to work the way that you want to. Um, so with that said, let's take it one step further. I'm gonna go back up here and I'm just gonna say season one and I am going to, let's see, run this cell. Sorry, run here, cell, run all below. We've got this information here. We've got the number overall. We've got the number in season, all this data and stuff like that. This US viewers millions though, this one's a little weird because you'll notice that it's a 6.77, but then there's a something in brackets. This comes from how these footnotes are handled in the table inside of Wikipedia. 
we can use our string operations like our slicers. So what if I wanted to remove that bracketed number from every single one of these? Let's do, uh, let's do something here. Let's just take this and treat it like it's a string. 6.77 bracket four. We're gonna treat it as a string for a specific reason, but we'll hopefully convert it to a number in a little bit. The reason why we wanna treat it like a string is because we wanna chop it up like it's characters, okay? We have a six, then a decimal, a seven, a seven, a bracket, a four, and another bracket. Well, just like banana up here, I can do operations on this like a string. I can also treat strings like they're lists of characters. So let's look at how animals works here. We've got animals O to five. We start at the zero position, keep going up until we stop just before five. In this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. And I really just want the first four of them. So I didn't quite get what I wanted. Let's do it this way. So what we've done here is we've started at position zero, gone up to and stopped just before we went to position four. And that has now converted this to what appears more like a number, even though it's still got the single quotes after it, it's the, it's, which denotes that it's a string, we're getting rid of these brackets and things. Are we always going to have a number that's in this format where it's a single number, a decimal, and then two afterwards? No. So always starting and always grabbing the first four characters isn't going to work. And this is one of the things that's also neat about these lists here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab animals again. We know that animals has eight items in it. And we can check that with the length function. And we know that we can get the item at position, the first position by saying animals zero. And we know we can get the last item by saying it's position seven. But what if we wanted a way to always get the last item? Well, what we can, if we said, grab the item in position seven, and I want it to be the last item, that works if there's eight items in the list, but it doesn't work if there's any other numbers. If I wanted to say grab the element in position eight, we get an out of range error. What I can do though, is I can use negative numbers. Negative one means instead of starting at the left and going to the right, it means start at the right and head left. So this will, no matter what your length of list is, will always give you the last element. Minus two will always give you the second to last element. Remember goose is up here. If I said animals and I use the append method to add a new value to it, this will now change. See, this would have been negative one, this would have been negative two. I can use these with this same functionality here to pull out stuff based upon its relationship to the end of the string. So, seven, seven, four, oops, four, and then I'm gonna say, what is negative three? That's that square bracket. If I made that the end point, then what I've done here is I've said, I wanna start at the beginning 
and then go all the way over to the right just before the third from the last item. And that's how we would use this right here. That's how we would convert this using these values to, that's how we would convert these two numbers. And we can do that with the apply function. So we've got episodes. And this one is, I don't want to type this because again, I'm lazy. So let's go through what we've done here. When we talked about our friends, the doggos, remember the doggos? And we did this kind of thing where we said, we took the data frame and then we said dog name or breed or whatever, and we put it inside these brackets that gave us just the dog name or the breed. So I cut and paste US viewers millions, put it in here because I didn't want to type it. And then I used what was called the string accessor. Remember we used that here and that just allowed me to convert the values that I would return into strings temporarily so that I can do an operation on the strings. And that's what I've done here is just like with this, I've started at the beginning, which is by default zero, and gone up to the third from the last position and got these just as numbers. And if I assign this back in, and I look at the episodes, these are now numbers. And if I change this to season two, now these right here, something's different. Something happened here and these weren't quite right. We'd have to look at why those were different. Maybe those had a two digit number inside of them, but we can start to see that it's working in some places and we'd have to investigate. Yeah, look, these are two digit numbers. So the point is that sometimes you get messy data and while we aren't really going too far into the, the realm of messy data, which that's going to be another class, we start to see that this functionality works for dealing with a setup and changing a single character and getting it to go all the way through. And if you have data that you have to get frequently from a web page, for example, and it's always in a table format, you can get this data. And once you've fixed your tools, you should only have to change the character once. I encourage you to find other TV shows that have seasons. Um, and we could try and see if one of those works. Somebody give me a TV show we can try. First person in chat to respond. We'll go see if it works. Happy endings. How did I know? Happy endings, TV series. Why is this the American television sitcom that aired on ABC from April 13th to May 3rd? I hope so. Let's take a look. Now this is one of those things like working with children and animals. You never know if it's actually going to work or not. So let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and get the seasons. This is season one. Okay. Let's see if it works. Now this one, the format is a little bit different because we didn't have the descriptions at every single other one, but we got to see that pretty much our code works very similarly. So we didn't actually have to do the backfill stuff or the alternating. So the point being is that once you have this type of code, <laughs> description for each episode, it was amazing. We could probably do that, um, add that in there. How about we do that then? So we've got episodes episodes 
description equals it was amazing. There we go. We've corrected the description by pandas is really kind of neat where you can set, you can simultaneously add a new column and assign values into the column at the same time. Cool. You're very welcome. All right. So we're at the quarter hour here. I would like to go ahead and stop the recording now so that I can give people an opportunity to speak up and ask questions if they have them. So let me go over here and thank you all for being with me today. I'm going to stop the recording now.